Greetings everybody, I just wanted to make this video on how I made this pirate ship painting. It was uh, my most popular painting on Instagram and um, you can see here that the, the image that I uploaded got like 5,000 likes which by itself doesn't necessarily mean anything but um, it was my most popular upload on Instagram and I only had 2,600 likes at the time and so people were finding it, people were liking it and considering it didn't take me too long to make versus other paintings that I might have spent gosh weeks on uh, that didn't get anywhere near as as much uh, engagement it did make me think um, what is it that I did right this time and uh, you know what should it, what does that mean for, for the sort of work that I wanted to create in the future uh, so I thought I'd make this to show you guys what how I made it because this was a different process than I normally make and I did uh, sort of catalog a lot of the making of uh, in the steps that I made uh, so I have some material to draw upon in order to show you like uh, the process what I'm going to be doing is talking about the backstory of a piece of art what goes into it because a lot of the time when we look at a tutorial we will see, somebody will say like, okay, so let's just start with this, or I started with this sketch, uh, but you don't know what came before the sketch. And it's good to trace, to go back as far as you can in the process uh, to really find out what, how an artist like, came up with something because this came up, came out of nowhere. And most art just kind of seems to appear out of nowhere on the page. When we see the finished product, we imagine that they just went blip and just created it, but there's uh, there's a there's a process to that. So I wanted to go in into the backstory of why I made this piece. Uh, then I want to sort of talk about uh, what happened uh, when I decided to make it, and I then did the research, and then go through the sketching process itself and some brushwork and that kind of thing. So um, I kind of want to talk about the backstory first. So this is a pirate painting, obviously, with a pirate ship. And I've got quite a strong sort of like uh, affinity for this kind of uh, theme, and uh, the reason being is because, and I got some, Im I prepared some images. I have long been a fan of uh, Disney and uh, Disneyland. Uh, I've visited the theme parks on numerous occasions, and um, and so I went. I've been there a few times over the last few years, and when I was a child. And the things that always stood out the most were the pirates ride, well, the pirate ride, and now more recently they've got a few more pirate uh, things going on in Disneyland uh, because of what used to be Tom Sawyer's Island. And so you've got this image here, here which is taken from uh, the sort of I don't know what it's called now, pirates uh, lair or something like that, but it's on it's on Tom Sawyer's Island, and uh, this is like a really it's like a, you go into a cave and you can look through these sort of gaps in the walls and through these through the doors and you can see um, like skeletal pirate stuff and there's sound effects happening. The whole experience is really uh, is really rich and moody, atmospheric. Um, and also, I when I went there last year, it was my birthday and I went and had uh, dinner at the Blue Bayou restaurant, uh, which is. Uh, if you can see where the blue is here, that's like a fake sort of sky backdrop and the pirate's ride goes through the back of the restaurant. It's really amazing and I was really lucky to get dinner reservations for there. And the reason why I'm telling you all this is because um, these are the kind of things that will influence like the sort of work that you could be making, should be making, perhaps you already are making. Um, and sometimes when you make a painting, uh, you might not be aligned with the motivation as to why you're making it in the first place. Uh, for me, these these kind of these pirate realms, uh, these kind of little worlds, are um, they're really sort of compelling. They've got a lot of atmospheric kind of draw for me. I also went on the uh, this pirate ship, uh, this galleon. Don't know what it's called. Um, that's, that's also really cool and you can actually go inside it. Do I have any images? Yeah, I've got some images here of the inside of it. 
Um, and all of this, you know, I think it's like, I don't know if it's like an, an authentic um, restored ship or something. Uh, I don't really know the history of this ship. I should check it out. But um, all of these little details, they sort of si they sink in. And if you appreciate this kind of realm, it will just really uh, just add to the whole experience. And it will, you know, lead me to create this painting. Um, so what else is kind of cool is I... Uh, I, uh, when it was my birthday, I got this birthday cake brought out to me in the Blue Bayou restaurant. And the weird thing was, I never told anybody that it was my birthday. So it was really kind of magical. So whenever I go to Disneyland, I like to I like to go and see um, see the pirates and sort of really just uh, lose myself in that world because it feels it almost feels kind of real in a way. So when creating this work, I really felt like I was trying to put that kind of flavor into it and um, and like I say it was very successful and a lot of people uh, were commenting and saying how how it made them feel and um, the brushwork and that kind of thing I think was a played a played a part in it so we'll get into that too uh, later on so the first thing before I did this painting was to do some research and try and figure out exactly what kind of uh, image that I wanted to make and it was really wide open. I didn't have a clue. I just knew I wanted it to be pirates, and I wanted it to maybe have a ship in there somewhere. And as I started to do some research, um, I would come across images that perhaps had a certain flavor of something that I wanted to sort of look after or go after. So, like, uh, I kind of wanted it to be, I guess I wanted it to be at night time for one because I wanted to have some kind of lights going on somewhere. Um, I wasn't sure. I kind of liked the idea of having some windows in the ship that were illuminated um, or some fire in there somewhere. I saw this image here and I, I marked that one because I really love the way that the light sort of glows and hits these sails. Um, I have two sections here for research. Well, there's three sections in total for research, but in terms of, uh, I like to split my research into um, reference images so that I can actually know what something looks like in the real world, but then art reference. Uh, that's less about information and more about how am I gonna, what sort of style am I gonna paint this in? and um, How am I gonna use my brushes and that kind of thing? Do I want it to be tight and polished or loose um, and and these a lot of these are from uh, Assassin's Creed well some of them I think, I think this guy is and this guy and probably this guy um, and then there's the more traditional stuff which this one has a really great dynamic composition that was what started to, to sort of speak out to me too was uh, a composition that was really like that would really draw me in. Not so much like this. I like the mood of this. I didn't like the composition so much. Uh, likewise for these, and I liked the composition for for something maybe like this. Um, and it was another one. I like the brushwork for here. It's nice and loose because I had t been telling myself to finish a painting in a day, so. Uh, I knew that I couldn't go for something tight as a as a finish, and I really liked the composition for this. This um, spoke to me a lot because with these ropes going into the painting and onto the ship, I mean, it makes it so different if there was no ropes here and you were just looking at a ship in isolation. We're now going all the way into the painting, so I wanted something that would draw us into the painting that was loose and that had some mood and atmosphere and then I did some research for I've got this folder full of pirate ship imagery um, but I looked up a lot of this on Pinterest and wherever I could uh, there's a bit of Pirates of the Caribbean stuff going on here all kinds of like nice details I kind of I did want and I, I guess I didn't fit this much into the painting but I did want to create some ornate details but I kind of hit a brick wall in terms of um, 
the difficulty of the perspective and we'll talk about that later because uh, it's a, a it's a fairly tricky shot to pull off but if you look at some of the some of the artwork from um, uh, from Assassin's Creed Black Flag you'll notice that like say here there's hardly any detail on this ship but it's all implied so you can get away with quite a bit um, pirate ships are very architectural or the, or the sort of like 17th century galleons 18th century galleons and things like that they're extremely architectural uh, and yet they sort of look organic as well when they're a shipwreck like this and there's, they're a bit sort of tatty they're just all over the place and you can you can afford to make some mistakes uh, and even when they're displayed kind of upright you kind of just have this flat base and then sails up at the top so you there's some there is some wiggle room but you have to be careful uh, that you don't just make it a, sort of a mess um, so uh, in terms of how the sketch process went the first stage was here I actually took uh, let's see if I have the original images so I guess I started here but I actually fused a couple of photographs I'm trying to find them now is it here right way back okay so yeah I took two of the photographs my idea was to just smooge them together to get a rough palette so in the research folder just so you can see it full res. Uh, I wanted this to be ideally sort of late afternoon. It started out with the idea of, of it being like a late afternoon with a storm because I liked these reflections here that were reflecting like a gray sky. It kind of had, added some mood. Um, and then this piece here, so that would be here. These, I love all these lights kind of illuminating the ship and this kind of glows and that kind of thing the reflections in the water so I took both of these image and like smoothed them together so you could hardly even tell that they were there um, and these here you can tell are elements of the original the, the these kind of points of light here and so they're, they're literally just thrown in, but they would later be kind of capitalized on, but as a sort of happy accident. So it kind of went from there to here, and then, and then I just kind of like hid that layer a little bit so I could so I could concentrate on drawing the silhouette. And I started out with this shape as a very rough kind of blocking, and I realized that it wasn't what I was looking for as going back to my the brief that I'd given myself which is like, you know, this kind of thing leading in or like maybe like that but more turned towards us um, certainly like this and definitely like that so I reworked the composition uh, so that it was more like this kind of like swooping in leading in and then pointing upwards at the front of the ship. I don't know the correct terminology. Um, and then I I started to like I put in like a perspective grid, but I was a bit concerned that I wasn't going to get the the sails accurate. So I found a 3D model of a ship, and I just uh, I didn't do any kind of paint over. I just put it in the viewport and the right angle, or the rough roughly the right angle. Um, took a screenshot just so that I could get an idea, right, well, okay, the sails, will go, they're going to go way off the page here, and there's going to be one here that conforms to that line of perspective, and then it will more, just something rough, you know, and then, so tweaked it a little bit, then I could put the sails in. Um, even at this stage, I don't think it's like 100%, well, obviously it's not 100%, but uh, I was just going for the main, the main kind of read, and the overall sort of gist because I wanted it to have some energy and if you make some mistakes that's okay when you've got like a painting that's kind of loose started to put in the some of the rigging and the the water in kind of loose brush strokes some more waves 
and then just some texture on the ship and I was brightening the brightening the sky here threw in some sails uh, again they weren't very tight or particularly detailed or anything like that and then I, I think this is where I brought in one of those early layers let's see if I can find it somewhere here so yeah this is like just one of those layers which is on a light and let's see what it looks like without on a normal that so you can remember that one from early on um, so originally it looked like that and then all I did was take that layer and then change it to light and which takes all of the points of light and, and removes the, the dark parts and so you're only left with what is lighter than the, what's underneath it um, and I just felt that those these kind of lights are going to come in handy later so we've got the shape of the ship the sails and the the layer behind it, the, the fire layer. And I didn't, like I say in the beginning, I didn't even think, oh, I'm going to have a ship that's on fire. Uh, I just turned on those layers and saw that there was uh, some fire that looked like, oh, I guess the ship could be on fire then. And then I just started to pursue that. Uh, trying to keep the brush strokes flowing with the shape of the ship. It's no good just filling in like flat areas of color because your ship which is a very rounded shape it's just going to flatten out so and the perspective you want to draw people kind of through through the image and the brush strokes help in that way and so I knew that I was on to something as soon as I put this these reflections in the water I thought I think this piece is going to work out quite nicely because of the the sort of mood that it's getting here the reflections are really quite a useful tool especially in selling the the water and the sh how shiny the water is so then i started to play up using some very quick brush strokes i started to play up the fire and get just like the idea here there's uh, there's some light coming out of the shot and hitting that mast and then just working in some more like misty spray here this was the hardest part this was uh, this kind of had me stumped for a little while is trying to figure out the the sort of perspective on something so so sort of like tricky as this so if we go to the reference some boats look kind of fairly flat with the, how the the cannon holes are laid out this is relatively flat and I was trying to figure out is this ship going to be really sort of like um, flowy and rounded uh, in the middle or is it going to be flat and I concluded that it was going to be kind of rounded um, and I think there was some ships that did follow that and some ships that didn't um, most of these seem fairly flat but um, I think there was some of these yeah, this, this looks like it has an arc, and I felt that my ship was kind of along that vein, unfortunately, because it meant that I had to figure out how to do that. And so what I did was, so like this, set out a series of boxes, then conformed them to that shape using the warp tool. Then you see that they have a little bit of a weird bend here, so then I straighten that out and then I think I ended up getting rid of every other one because I felt like they were too close together when I was looking at the reference um, you don't have like really quick succession of cannons so yeah so I took it took away every other one and then put the cannons inside with some shadow imagining the, the, the lights coming from the top here from the moon and casting some shadows down there And then most of the painting is kind of done now. It's just a matter of filling in some of the details. At this stage, I must have put in, yeah, at this stage I put in the silhouette of the pirate. Let's look at a close up of that. Zoom in. Okay, so. Uh, so, like, I, I often struggle with, like, little characters because they have to be really, they have to really stand out. 
and uh, it's tricky to get them to stand out when they've just made up a few pixels. So you kind of start out like that. And I don't even know if I use reference for that. So it's um, sometimes these things come together just um, without much trouble and other times they are a bit of a tricky one. But it's like, like I say, it's a loose painting. We're seeing him from a distance. So we don't have to worry about him being 100%. So I just did that silhouette, and I actually left him as a silhouette for a while because I was, I knew that I would, well I thought that I would struggle, it wasn't too bad, but in terms of giving him some like colour and some paint, um, and that's all he is, if we zoom right in, there's not much to him really. Um, so, so yeah, I put in the silhouette, um, left him alone for a while. Then I changed the rigging. The rigging's tricky because you you have something that is very repetitive, very straight, and in, when you're painting, you, you've got to be careful of those things because they can really anything that's like high frequency like that will draw the eye, and you don't want that to happen. So I tried to sort of make it kind of loose, and then I think I smudged little bits here and there just so that it wasn't 100% tight and straight. So you can see there, before and after. Now I'm just thinking about what, how can I detail this ship? This was actually as hard as the as the cannons, if not harder, because the perspective is like quite extreme. I think I, if I have my perspective grid still here, so the perspective grid is really extreme. It's not just going down into this vanishing point, but it's it's curving. So. That was why how I struggled with these um, with these cannon holes, uh, and likewise with this architecture, I have to try to imply and invent some boat architecture at the same time as having this really crazy perspective. So I just had to muscle through it. It, uh, it took a bit longer than I uh, hoped, but perhaps as long as I anticipated. So. I went from here to here, just again, like keeping going back to this reference, seeing what sort of shapes do they have. They usually have uh, these support pieces here. There's like a balcony kind of thing going on where people can like walk through the windows, that kind of thing. And as much as I was looking at the reference, it was still very tricky to implement it into the actual model. Sorry, the actual ship. So I tried like having a second tier down here, that didn't quite work. So I just made this and then these were some shapes that I quickly put together. It's an interesting technique, you can make, just put on the symmetry tool, make a few shapes, then duplicate those in a line, skew them into shape, and then you have something that resembles like a detail. And the idea being that these windows here this is like the recess as per as per this kind of thing. And so, so then it was just kind of like adding the finishing touches. The I could now put some paint on this guy and imply some detail in the wood. I wanted to show some sort of damage here, like a little bit of a smash where a cannonballs maybe hit some more energy using the smudge tool. So I think at this stage I probably went around just with the smudge tool and just smudged the, the flames, smudged some other areas. And, and I use this tool which has a brightness jitter, which just again sort of implies some detail. And then there's a close up of the guy. So I think that pretty much sums up the process for this painting. Okay, that's it for this video. I hope you got something out of it. If you did, please leave a thumbs up and a comment. Uh, I'd like to know if, uh, if you guys have had the same sort of experience where you've had something in your life that meant a lot to you and that you wanted to channel that into your artwork. Uh, maybe you struggled, maybe you uh, managed to make it work, uh, but I'd like to know 
what sort of experiences you've had because I know it's been a struggle for me and it's probably a struggle for most artists so thank you for watching and um, I shall see you in the next video